In this video I'm going to review the process of using reference geometry to create features on parts that can't be created directly from the front, the right, or the top plane. In other words, one of the principal planes. This is the guide from the trolley we're going to be uh, creating. If you notice, there's a boss that extrudes out from the base, but it comes out at an angle. The angle is eight and a half degrees. That's to so it'll match up all right on the I beam. What I need to do is to draw that circular feature right here, so it's in the right side view on a plane that's eight and a half degrees tilted from straight up and down. And then I can extrude the um, circle back down to the boss, back down to this base. In order to do that, what I need is something to draw on. There's nothing out here when I first start off, so what I'm going to do is to put a reference plane there. But to start with, I'm going to put the reference plane back here so that it's tilted right around the origin of that hole. Go back to uh, SolidWorks. Now, this is what the base looks like, and what I've done is just rolled back all the features. This is the entire guide, and that's the surface I want to create. But before I can do that, I have to have something to draw on. And right now, if I come back up to here, that's what the base looked like back at the beginning when I roll all these features back. So what I need to do is to put a reference plane on this back surface, rotate it 8.5 degrees, and then use it to create another reference plane that comes out at the end of that raised boss. Now, when I created this shape, go unroll it again. I made the origin dead center on the circle on the back side of the part because that to me was the most usable location um, and it's going to be usable right now because it's going to be the, the uh, location I use to rotate my reference plane. So let's bring that back up to here. Okay, I'm going to come first and say insert reference geometry not a plane, but an axis, because we need a way of rotating and a location for rotating the plane. Axes can be created in a number of different ways, one of which is to take two intersecting planes and use them to generate an axis at their intersection. If I select two planes, and then I pick the front plane and the top plane, that yellow line is an axis where they intersect, I accept that, and now an axis has been placed in the drawing, or on the part. Now I go back, insert reference geometry plane, select that surface, and it's going to put a plane at that surface that rotates around that axis. Now I happen to have used 8.5 already. Normally when you uh, bring this in, it comes in and looks like this. So it comes in at a 90 degree angle, and you have to change the angle. So I'm going to go back over to where it said 90, change it to eight and a half. You notice it's going in the wrong direction. So I'll reverse it so it does that. Accept it, and now I have a reference plane I can use. What I want to do now is to move that reference plane out here. There's one little problem. I don't really know how far out to move it yet. If you look at the drawing, I know the distance from the center of that hole horizontally all the way over to here because it's given as 30 and you can see that's a horizontal dimension those two arrowheads line right up what I need to do therefore is to draw a, a rec I mean a triangle whose base goes from here 30 degree uh, 30 millimeters out and whose hypotenuse is at an angle of eight and a half degrees there are a number of ways I could do that but thanks to Joel Titcomb who pointed this out in the class um, that I taught the other day I have a, a very nifty method. What I'm going to do is to draw some sketch uh, geometry on the right side plane. Now I'm not using this plane just yet. What I'm doing now is just trying to figure out how far to move it. So if I go to sketch, select the right side plane, and see where I'm drawing here. I'm going to now take and sketch on that plane. Let's take a look straight at it. And what I'm going to do is sketch a line that comes out about 30. Sketch another line that comes up a short distance. Another line that goes back to here. Now I'm going to use smart dimensions and put a dimension of 30 on that line and put an angle of 8.5 there. Now that corner right there represents the location where I'd like the plane parallel to the one I've created to sit. So I'll just stop. You can see what I've got now is several things that aren't really part of any feature. An axis, a plane, and a sketch. Now I'm going to go back up to Insert, Reference Geometry, Plane. It asked me to make a selection, so I'm going to pick that as my selection. But instead of offsetting at a specific distance, what I'm going to do is select Parallel Plane at Point 
the point I'm going to pick is right here. Now that plane is in exactly the right location because horizontally it's 30 millimeters over. I'll accept that. Now I've got a plane I can draw on. I can go back to that sketch and just say let's uh, go and hide that so I don't have to see it anymore. And actually I don't really need that axis right there and I don't need the first plane I used either. All I really want is that plane right there. It kind of simplifies things. Now I'll go over here to sketch, pick the plane I just created, and if I want to look right at it, I can hit the space bar, normal to, and it turns around unfortunately, but it's normal to that plane. Now I'm just using the arrow keys to turn it around so I can look straight down at it. Now I'll put my circle at the origin, draw the circle, put a dimension on the circle, and the dimension of that part is 44. Now that's fully defined. What I want to do now is to bring it from that plane I drew on down to here. So I'll come over to Features, Extruded Boss, and instead of Blind, I'll go up to Next, or could go up to Surface. It depends. If I think that surface might move and something else might kind of intervene at some point down the road, it might be better to go up to Surface. But I'll leave it as up to Next right now. Select that plane I'm no longer using. So I will now hide that as well. And then I can go ahead and draw my next um, feature directly on that surface because that's where I want the hole to start. So rather than start with a plane that may not match up with that surface at some point in the future, I'm going to actually draw on the surface this time my circle at the same center, put a dimension on it, 26 in this case. And now on that one, I'll do another um, extruded cut. And this one could go, might go up till next. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work up till next as well. Again, we could have gone up to surface and then just pick that surface. Goes all the way through now and you've got uh, that part of the component already made. One last thing we'll take a, uh, a look at is the part of the guide down here has a little cut that goes all the way across. And you notice there's no surface to get a hold of to do that sketching on. We could sketch on the uh, end surface if we wanted to. I'd prefer in this case to sketch on the plane that goes down the middle. Probably wouldn't make any difference on this part, but if you sketch on the plane, that plane can't change, whereas that surface can. If that surface changes, you probably want the cut you're about to make to change with it. But just to be on the safe side, if you can possibly do it, it's better to dimension to things like origins and better to sketch on one of the fixed planes. So that's what I'm going to do is sketch on that uh, right plane right there, sketch that little shape right here, and then do an extruded cut. So go back to our sketch mode. Um, so let's do a sketch. We'll select the right side plane. Go into the line command. Start right here. Come over. Come down. Come over. Come up. There's a shape we want. Now we'll go to the dimension function. Uh, the problem with that is I went right to the midpoint there, so I need to get rid of one of my relations. And the one I'm going to get rid of is that one right there, the coincident relation. At least I think I'm going to. Okay, we're all set. Now we have uh, 6 as a dimension here. Dimension from... Oh, hang on. I'm going to go back into the edit mode. So I'll put the dimension from this endpoint to there. That's also 6. Now that's a fully defined sketch. It's right down the center. We'll go over to Features, an extruded cut. And what we're going to do is go in two different directions with this. Not blind. <clears throat> we'll go up to Next on this one. And then we'll go and pick Direction 2 and go up to next on that one as well. You can see that's going to give us what we want. Click OK and now we have that little cutout right there.